Here we go. Oh. got in music, if you don't have a fancier bass drum than that, you can still make some really good music. Can you overuse that? Hell no, you can't overuse that. Now, what was all of that? Why did we go through all of that? Man, well, to feel good. Anytime you get a chance to feel good, then let's feel good. All right. Now, this is exciting because when you're learning something, there are some fundamentals that you should take on because they can get you through. If you don't have any of the fancy stuff, there are certain things that can get you through. Now, let's say if you were painting, if you had your primary colors, you'd be all right. But if somebody gave you bright orange, gold, and dark brown, you're really limited in what you can do. Similarly, with Excel, your if statement is like a primary color. Your if statement is a fundamental, like that four on the floor, that bass that's kicking and telling everybody's booty where it's supposed to be. One, two, three three, four, there's no guessing. You will be all right. The if statement is like that. And then there's this old ugly ifs that I made a video about that one. That thing, I'm convinced I don't like ifs. No. But anyway, let's, let's not have this buzz kill. Let's have a good time. The if statement, it has three parts. A condition that you want to test. What you want if that condition is true and what happens if that condition is false. Let's say you had a list of competitors and the greatest score was 10 and you want to know who scored nine or above just to easily be able to see who was at nine and above and who was not. You can have Excel look and say, if this number was nine or above, then put qualified. And then if that condition is not true, then maybe leave it blank. So let's dive into a very simple example say we want to check for the city of Tokyo and then put check in this cell C2 we're going to start our if statement and we want to know if the city is Tokyo and if it is Tokyo then let's bring back the name of the city equals if open parentheses and remember from yesterday, if is our function and we open with that equal sign, which means we are writing a formula. 
if B2 equals, and I've got to put this text in a quotation marks, quotation marks, Tokyo, then what? Bring back what's in B2. Otherwise, leave it blank. Let's just put double quotation marks, close, enter. And here's one tip for you. I'm going to double click this square rather than I can drag this down or I can double click this square. Let's do that. We see we have three Tokyo's. What if we want to change this to Lisbon? Got to go into this formula and I'm going to highlight Tokyo and put in Lisbon. And double click. Got two Lisbons. So you can see that is fundamentally what an if is. But now I gave you some homework yesterday to go into that relative and absolute cell references video and I am not going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to do it. So if you can follow me, great. And, you know, if you can follow me and you haven't watched that video, if not, got to put your hat on and get up out of here right now and go over there and then come back, take your hat off, and then we can get started again. So I am going to show how to not wind up in the lake of fire. Because hard coding that Lisbon in there, you saw the problem that we had. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that quotation mark, Lisbon quotation mark, and delete. If B2 equals this cell, let me slide this thing out of the way. If B2 is equal to F2, then bring me back B2. And because I am going to drag the formula down, I don't want F2 to drag down. So I need absolute cell references there. So I'm going to hit F4, boom, double click. Ho! Oh, now we've got Lisbon. Now what happens? If I put Mexico City. Oh, look at that. We got two Mexico cities. See, now we're doing something. We can change this to Singapore. Oh, yeah. And let's review this before we move on. This says, if B5, because that's where we are now, and here's a tip. I'm going to put my cursor in the formula bar. If B5, which is lit up by the blue, is equal to F2, which says Singapore, then bring me back what's in B5. Otherwise, remain empty. Taking this up a level, making this a little more complex. Now, let's say that this was a class or a workshop and it happened during these months and the cities that it happened in. So looking at this, there were 36 attendees in Toronto in March. What if we wanted to total attendees that were in March? Assume you don't know about some if or some ifs. You can if your way into anything, just again like that four on the floor. If that's all you got, that will work. So we're going to do that with the if statement equals if this month is equal to this month and we need our absolute cell reference F4. Then what if it's true? Bring me back the total number of attendees. Then comma and empty double click 
Now, let's do a sum. Equals sum. We saw that yesterday. And I'm going to drag and copy this. Enter. A total of 68 in March. And what if we want to know about January? 84 in January. Now, what if we wanted to know about both January and the city of Sydney? Now we've got two criteria that we want to look for, and we're going to just use two if statements. Count two. We know that we already have January out here. This column F represents January. Now we want to know about Sydney. Equals if. D2 is equal to Sydney. And we need our absolute cell reference, F4. Then bring me back this count because we already have January extracted. Otherwise, empty. Let's double click. And let's do a sum equals sum and highlight this equals we had January, there was 84. And in Sydney, there's 59 in January. So these are some pretty basic examples. We'll see more through the rest of this month. But that gets you introduced to a key, key, key function in Excel. Now let's look at a nested if statement. That means we're going to put an if inside of an if. And this is where you hear some people say that the if is overused. Well, if that's what you got, then that's what you got. Now we could use a VLOOKUP. We could do other ways of fixing this situation, but we want to take these scores and categorize them. We want to say that this 65 is denied. This 83 qualified this 95 elite that's what we want next to these scores now let's think about our if statement if that 65 now let's think about the if statement that we're going to build now let's think about the nested if statement that we're gonna build. If this 65 is 92 or larger, then write elite. Otherwise, go to this other if statement. If the 65 is 80 or larger, then put in qualified. Otherwise, denied. We don't need a third if for denied because that's the last possible scenario. So let's do this. Equals if whatever is in C2 is greater than or equal to whatever is in J2, and we need our absolute cell reference, F4. Then whatever is in I2, absolute cell reference. Otherwise, look at this other if. If C2 
is greater than or equal to what's here, and then absolute cell reference, comma, the term that's here, qualified, and F4 again. Otherwise, whatever is in I4 and F4, close the first set of parentheses, close the second set of parentheses. 65 is denied. Double click. 83, yes, qualified. This 70, denied. The 97 here is called elite. But we could go on with this. And later in the month, I'll show you the VLOOKUP, show you a lot of easier ways to do things. But I'm telling you, if you can sort, filter, and write if statements, you can go a long, long way. Those are your primary colors. That is your four on the floor to get people dancing and keep them having a good time. All right, we'll see you tomorrow with Excel Ignited. <laughs>